What's up YouTube? This is Beer here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to download and install Visual Studio Community 2019 on a Windows 10 PC. Alright, so let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is fire up a browser of your choice. I like to use Google Chrome, but any browser will do the trick. So then type into your search bar Visual Studio 2019 Community Download. And then take the link from visualstudio.microsoft.com. All right, so now we're presented with three different options for Visual Studio 2019. We have Community, Professional, and Enterprise. Professional and Enterprise are paid subscriptions to Visual Studio, but they're also set up for business environments that need to handle multiple coders. So what we're going to download is Visual Studio 2019 Community. This is a free download, and it's set up just for an individual coder. So what we actually have downloaded now is the Visual Studio installer. The installer isn't actually the integrated development environment. It is just like a package manager for the environment that we're going to install. So that'll take a second and we'll come back once that's done. All right, and now that we're finished installing the installer, we're looking at a screen that has four tabs. We have workloads, individual components, language packs, and installation locations. Today we're only going to be focusing on the workloads because that's all that we're going to need. The workloads handle bigger packages uh, that can set up entire development environments essentially by themselves. So the one that we're going to be interested in is the .NET desktop development package. <clears throat> so we're just going to put a check there. And then all that we need to do is click install. All right, so now Visual Studio Community 2019 is actually installing onto our PC. While it's installing, it will also install the workload that we selected. You could have selected more workloads and it would just take longer to install. That's why the installer is put into play is really just to save the user time when they go to install their integrated development environment. So, this download and install process is going to take quite a bit, so we'll come back once we're done with this. Alright, so now that we're done installing Visual Studio 2019, Integrated Development Environment, uh, we're presented with the home screen. Here we'll see recent projects that we've worked on and our four options for getting started. So we're going to select Create a New Project. And on this screen, we're presented with a lot of different options on projects to start. But today, we're going to select the WPF app, built on the .NET framework, not the .NET core. Go ahead and press Next, and then we'll be looking at our project name. So just for the sake of time, I'm going to leave this all default. And then here, we get to select our framework. So these are based upon the time that they are made. So 4.7.2 is the most recent, 3.0 would be the oldest. So today we're going to work with the 4.7.2, the newest version of the .NET framework. And then press create. And then this is going to take a second to create your package. It's doing, or project I mean, uh, it's doing a lot of things setting up the environment for you. But once it's all done, you're going to be presented with a nice project that you can start to work with. Uh, some of the features of the WPF app are the XAML aspect. Uh, XAML allows you to design your graphic user interface before you actually have to run it and build it. So that's what it's loading up right now. And by XAML, I do mean XAML. Uh, very commonly confused with XML, but no, this is XAML, a little bit different language. And then the main window.xaml.cs file is the file that contains the code behind this user interface. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and check this out. So the first thing that we see here is the class. This just sets up which class it's going to have the code send to, essentially, and that would be the main window.xaml.cs. So that's all good. Um, the next thing that we're going to see, or really take a look at, is the title. 
So the title is found up here in the top left corner. Uh, this is an easily changeable name. So for right now, let's go ahead and make it just main. And you can see the change here in the top left. Uh, some of the other interesting aspects are the height and the width. And this is actually going to be your window size once the program actually runs. Uh, for right now, we'll just keep this as the default. But just know that you can change your window size very easily here with the height and the width properties. All right. So now we're going to take a look at the main window .xaml.cs file. So this is the code behind the user interface, like I mentioned earlier. Here you're going to see quite a few different namespaces. Uh, don't worry too much about them right now, just leave them as is. Those essentially just handle which libraries are linked to this project when it's built and run. Uh, so here is our namespace. This is the namespace that we're actually creating, and it should be the name of the project that you created. And then... Down here, we have our partial class main window colon window. And that essentially just means that's where all the XAML interface elements are going to be linked to. All right, and the final thing that we're gonna do is put a label onto our main window. Uh, it's not gonna be any just normal label though. It's actually going to be a invisible label. So to do this, we're going to start by going to our toolbox here on the left hand corner. Uh, if you're like me, you'll see that under general there's no usable tools. That's not very useful. So if you click the all WPF controls, and then you're presented with a lot more options. So we're going to go to the element called label and drag that on over to our main window. And now we have a label. It's resizable and beautiful. So what we want to do is change the content of this label. So I'm going to make my content say, hi, mom. And then make sure it fits. We got to resize our label. There we go. And then just to make it a little bit more aesthetic, we're going to make the font size one. All right, there we go. So now to make the label invisible, what we want to do is type in visibility and set this to hidden. So that just sets the property of the label's visibility to hidden. And now it's invisible. So the way that we're actually going to get to see our label is by adding a button. So if we just drag our button and place it onto our main window, we now have a button. And we're gonna change this content to say, show label. All right, nice. And now the way this is linked into our program is to add an event handler to this button. An event handler is essentially what it what it is what it's named um it just handles the different things that are going to happen within your program at any given instant so what we do for this one is the click and you notice that there's a lightning bolt next to it that signals that it's an event handler and you see that we have this <clears throat> bind event that's going to pop up and this will just generate a name for us so we'll just go ahead and do that. Just press new event handler there, or just press enter. And now we have an event called button underscore click. So to access that event, we come to our main window.cs and you'll see that you have a new event here called button underscore click. So what we want to do when we click that button is to show our label. So, oops. One thing that we will have to do, however, is put a name to this label. Right now, it's essentially unaccessible by our main window.cs. So to make a name, just type name. So now we're in the name property, and we'll name it label1. 
So now when we come over to our main window, .xaml.cs, and we access label one, dot visibility equals visibility dot visible. <clears throat> and that's it. So now we're gonna build our program. And what we're expecting the outcome to be is when we click this show label button, our hi mom label will appear in the middle of the screen. So when we press start, and now it's gonna build the code and compile and then run it on our machine. So this could take a little bit of time depending on which, how much RAM you have and what your clock cycle is. So we'll come back once this is built. Alrighty, so now that our project has successfully been built, uh, let's take a look at a couple of aspects of this application. So in the top left hand corner of the application, we see that the title is named main, which is what we had set it to, so that's good. Uh, we also wanna notice that the application does run and appears in the taskbar. So that means that you can do things like minimize your application and still reopen it. Uh, so another thing to take note of is the process memory. This is shown in the diagnostics tool on the right hand side of your Visual Studio IDE. Uh, right now we're using about 46 megabytes of system memory to run this application. So now to see if our program actually works the way that we intended it to. We want to have an invisible button that appears only when we press the show label button. So let's go ahead and press it. When we press the show label button, you see that the hi mom label now shows it is visible, which is a property that we set within our program. So our program executed exactly how we wanted it to. So now to stop its execution, we can either press the red X in the top right hand corner of the window, or we can press the stop debugging button in the top of the Visual Studio IDE. I'll just go ahead and press the stop debugging button and we're brought back to our main window.xaml page. So we can continue to develop. Uh, I'd like to take some time to go ahead and thank everyone for watching and listening. Uh, go ahead and press that like and subscribe down below. Thank you guys.